welcome to the Rag Company Podcast. We're the Rag Company. I'm Dane Hennon. Across from me, Anthony Fisher. Hey, hey. To my left, Anthony Newling backs. Levi Your Gates. Blocking. Oh. <laughs> oh, there's someone else. And then there's someone <laughs> hidden behind Anthony. Uh, that would be John Hull. And uh, as you can tell, this is not an ordinary podcast. This is a detox cast. So this is where we talk to folks in the detailing and detailing adjacent industries. In this case, how about somebody who carries a lot of detailing supplies? That makes sense, right? Well, yeah. in addition to that, we're actually in the UK. So this is taking place far away from the United States where we used to do in these. And it's, you know, it's fun to have somebody with an accent on once in a while. So, Absolutely. well, damn, it's not an accent. We're the accents here. <clears throat> you go the accent. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, John, please introduce yourself, what you do, uh, what you're doing. Okay. Here. I'm, uh, I'm John Hull. <laughs> I run Clean and Shiny, uh, founder of Detailing World, along with Bill, and the founder of Waxstock, along with uh, PJ and Dom. Very nice. nice. How's that? And that's why we're here, is for Waxstock. Yeah, that's right. We, we just got done with it. It was a great show this year. Uh, it's been a long week, a very long week for you. We've been traveling, but yes. um, we got to spend the last couple of days together. Last night we went and did London Proper with John and Amanda and, and uh, Dave, was one fun. of the employees, and mm-hmm. it was a blast last night. We also went with the Colorlock Boys. So uh, for those of you that are listening in, hopefully uh, we will recap all of this for you on our actual yeah. main show. You can hear the whole story. But this time we've just got John here because John is actually a big... Uh, I mean, you're like a kingmaker here in, uh, yeah. in you London, cover a um, lot of base in the detailing industry in the sense that uh, detailing world started a long time ago. Yeah. The forum. When did it start? 18th of October, 2005 at 9.40 p.m. There you he go. He knows when he hit wow. the button. I do. <laughs> yeah. I do. And for those of you guys that are wondering, how many subscribers did you have on you have on Detailing World? Right forum? now there's uh, about 100,000 registered users. Well, that's is, solid. Which um, is insane. There's over uh, over a million posts. Yeah. yeah. And it still still gets uh, a lot of traffic today. It's probably the biggest detailing encyclopedia yeah. and forum in the world right now. Yeah. Yeah, as far as forums go, <clears throat> I, I don't think the, you know, as far as American stuff goes, it doesn't come close to the just sheer, hmm. you know, coverage that you guys got at Detailing yeah. World. Yeah. So, so that's what, really cool. What made you go for that? What made you start that? What gave you the idea for that? I do like, have a detailing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we should, we should start. Uh, so okay, we let's, back. let's go back a bit. Okay, so uh, 2003, um, I, I've been cleaning cars for a, a lot longer than that. Yeah. Without saying how old I am. <laughs> um, and uh, 2003, I set up Clean and Shiny because I couldn't find anywhere that I could buy almost imported US products. So I set, and, and at the same time as I did that, Meguiar's came into the UK. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I started selling Meguiar's to start with, and then Poor Boys, Chemical Guys, those sort of brands. Um, and it kind of skyrocketed a little bit from there. There was, there was only, there was only uh, Clean and Shiny, um, Serious Performance, Motor Geek, and that was about the the names that were around back in those days, two thousand and three. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did that for a couple of years, and obviously met a, met, a, met a few few crazy people along the way that, that that had the same obsession as me with keeping cars clean, and we were selling them products. And I I met a guy called Bill, um, and uh, dropped some products off to his to his house one day, and he was uh, we were. He was cleaning a Mercedes. I think it was his brother, brother-in-law's Mercedes. And so he was like, hey, do you want to give me a hand? And I was like, yeah, sure, I'm here. Let's do it. So we were polishing these tailpipes of the Mercedes. Um, and, uh, and yeah, we, we started talking about forums. And there was two US forums. There was Autogeek and Autopia at the time. Yeah. Hmm. And I said, yeah, we, we get this little bit of space on Autopia and this little bit of space on Autogeek for the UK section. I said, what would be really cool is if we actually maybe had one ourselves. A whole forum, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, yeah. That night, I set it up. I sent him a text message and went, "Hey, have a look at this. You want to log into this?" Um, and he he logged in, and it all went crazy from there. You know, uh, first month the server broke <coughs> <laughs> with too many people coming on. That's a good sign. The third month the server broke with too many people coming on, and this this continued until we we took out uh, some dedicated server space and. Uh, and then we just we just carried on growing it from there. We've got some great moderators on there. We've got some uh, these you know today we've got we've got some guys that do product testing on there for us, uh, official product testing. Um, 
we've got a guy we've got a guy Matt that does uh, does product reviews and all that sort of thing for YouTube for us and he may well have tried to walk around and grab you he did and yeah, he came by and said hi and he was like let's go do this I need you to record I went and yeah. stood by the booth but he yeah, got busy too he was busy so. he was busy but yeah that's how that's how that came up came about um, and then 20, 2012 well before 2012 2010 maybe me and PJ and Dom from Dodo Juice have been talking about, you know, we talked about doing a show. We'd all been approached at various times by by various people, um, magazine groups, that sort of thing, about about running a show, yeah. about how to set up a detailing show. Um, and, you know, we, we, the, I actually helped one of them get right to the stage of almost having this detailing section at Silverstone, Ooh. and two days before they canned it. Oh. So uh, it was like, right, okay. Um, <clears throat> So we then, we then between us in April 2012, I think it was, uh, said, hey, why don't we do this detailing show? Why don't we call it Wax Stock? Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, um, we, we set it up in April and we did the first show in July. That's cool. Uh, it was at Peterborough wow. Arena. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a mission to get it done. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it was the first time none of you yeah. had ever yeah. done it before. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, it was all very new territory. What do we need? Nobody yeah, very new territory. Nobody um, gets how much work goes into setting up an event. They think it's just simple. Oh, you just pull out the tents, you roll the car over, you invite people in, and that's it. They don't realize yeah. all of the prep well, and you all got, of the thought. That now, like it. just for us, like I got to roll in with the van, uh, with uh, um, our friend Rob, and it was <laughs> like we got to the thing, and it was. Yeah, hold on. We're directing traffic. There's cars coming out. We got these two vans are going to come out. This car's got to go in before you. And then, mm-hmm. then you guys can. And I was like, holy crap. And just watching everybody moving back and forth and having dedicated security on site, having the extra guys that were mm-hmm. literally making sure that things were going in the right spot. Yep. Um, and no one's getting hurt doing yep, it safely. That's right. Like, yeah, that's, that's, right. that's the crazy thing. So, yep. day starts on Saturday for us at about. 5, 5.30 a.m. Wow. And we get out of the hall after everyone's in the hall and doing and set up their stands and uh, detail the cars and all that sort of thing. We get out of the hall at 7. We aim to try and get out at 7. Yeah. We start to get a little bit forceful at 7.01. Yeah. Um, and then we're straight down to the trade dinner in the evening and then into the casino after that. And then the following day, again, it's about a 6 a.m. start. Yeah. Through to when the show finishes at 4.30 and we get out at about 8, 9 o'clock. That's cool. But it's a, so it's a long weekend. When you guys, what was the main like when you guys started? How was that first year? Um, the first year was it, it was good. I think we had, I think we had somewhere around 900, 900 people wow. show that's, up. Yeah, for the first that's show. good for that's the first amazing. year. Yeah. That's really good. And I think now we we have a circa three and a half thousand come. <laughs> that's cool. It, it was pretty busy on <laughs> Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has it always been on a Sunday? We always have on a Sunday. We have a set up on a Saturday. And that's because and then, of the. Um, it's everybody basically has Sunday off. Yeah. In a sense, like most of the the detailers and balloters yeah, and stuff. It. Yeah. They they do try to yeah. work on a Saturday and. And so also for for the companies that are showing, it means yeah. they can work up to Friday. Yeah. And come Saturday, do it Sunday, be back in work on Monday. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, because that was one of the things that I was, uh, I, people always ask is why is it on a Sunday? Mm. Yeah, and I was like, well, it's a little different. Over yeah. There, that's all. Like, they, there's people that always work, and then we've noticed when we host our own events on Saturday. There's always people like, ah, I wish I would have been on Sunday because I would have yeah. liked to have been I there. I would have showed up, but I was this working, or, or I had that. this, yeah. or I had that. And so yeah, we have the same thing at Clean Shiny. If we do an event on a Saturday, we get a lot of people going to arm work in Saturday. Can't yeah, make it. sorry. Yeah. So, uh, so this was the eighth. Wax this was Waxstock eight. eight. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Waxstock eight. Which is crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then, uh, so when we, so I mean, that was that was the picture. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so with wax stock, with detailing world, and then clean and shiny, clean and shiny came about prior to detailing right. world. It that was, was what you were doing. You're selling products. Two thousand and three. Yeah, I was doing that from two thousand and three onwards. And were you doing it uh, just out of your house? Were you I doing started it. Out of your, it uh, out of I started car? out. Of, like, what yeah, I started yeah. out of the house in the carriage, um, just all online, mail online. Uh, then we went into a unit. In 2006, 2007, somewhere like that, okay. and then from then it's been it's been based in units. I took a I took a bit of a sabbatical from it for a few years. Yeah, uh, I was doing something else for a few years, and then came back to it late 2012. 
Then you were, were you still selling product during that time, or were yeah, you... we're still selling product. I was just selling one one brand in particular. Yeah. I was selling Zeno in those times. Okay. We still sell yeah. Zeno today. Yeah, I, I focused on doing the distribution for for Zeno for and Zane, sort yeah. of doing that around Europe, and we kind of got known to be Zeno. Really, I had people talking to me as Zeno. It's like, yeah, it's not us. You need to go to the states. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, so we started talking uh, a couple years ago. A couple ago. years ago. Um, and that's when we started, uh, you actually, I remember you and I had started talking, uh, messaging back and forth on Facebook and Instagram, and then you bought one of our first flight packs that's it. when we did the Eagle yep. first flight for the JDRF, and uh, I remember, I think you bought two or three packs, two, yeah. and I remember I was down there that day working the tables with everybody, helping get them out and checking the orders because I just wanted to see who, who was buying them. And I remember I saw your name on there and saw that that was going to the UK. And I was like, holy cow, someone from out of the country bought that. Like, cool. has been up listening and watching because at uh, it would have been 10 o'clock at night yeah. for you. Yeah, probably, 10 or yeah, 11 at, probably something like that. Because we late. launched yeah, it, it was at late, 3, yeah. 3 o'clock yeah, in the I remember afternoon. It was late, so yeah. in our time zone. Yeah, so it would have been like 10 o'clock. So I was like... I remember I was super excited about that, that, that someone had been paying attention enough to do that. Um, and then that's how you and I started. Yeah, started you, you called today. I want to start carrying it. And we had been looking to, we'd already had Rag Company Europe, and we were looking to grow the UK a little more. And uh, uh, with the uh, possibility of Brexit looming, mm -hmm. it made sense to us from a business standpoint to split Rag Company Europe from the yep. UK. Um, and do our own Brexit, so to speak. But it was the fact that, <laughs> but it was the fact that it's still unknown. We didn't know yeah. if if Europe was going to be able to provide it, or we were able to provide it, or what. So it just made sense to split it, have two, and then uh, go from there. And so we made you our UK. Yep. Stop. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. We'll let it go. So anyway, oh, we made my. you our UK distributor, a master distributor, and uh, you got your first big shipment in. Uh, last week. Last week. Five pallets. Yep. Plus a Five, couple more foot, that showed up. Eight foot high pallets. Yeah. So we did a picture sitting on top of them, obviously, yeah. just to show how well packed they were. Yeah, that was Thank amazing. You, we were yeah, very those excited. Were huge. Yeah, Sean yeah. did a great job packing those. Um, how did you, you guys get up there? Yeah. Well, Ladders. Maybe a step ladder. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, how, and how do you get down? The same step ladder. Okay. That was a bit more hairy. <laughs> getting down wasn't as easy as getting we, up. We've gotten on top of some boxes before. We know how, how sketchy oh, yeah. it can be. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, and that was, I, I, we had packed those, and then I took a video when mm -hmm. they were leaving us so that you could see them. So when yep. you took your picture of them, like, it made it across the, the ocean, the yep. country and the ocean to get to you. Yep. Like, that was amazing. I was impressed at how well they, yeah, they, they, they lasted. They asked three or four times whether they could cut them open and repackage them and I said no they need to come as they were packed yeah that's <laughs> awesome well I'm glad they made it all the way across mm. so um, what are uh, what are some of your plans for wax stock in the future um, have do you guys have I know this year we did a lot of you did a, a CD in a day training mm -hmm. with the IDA yeah um, that was really neat to see that that uh, that was available in the morning for folks um, and I don't know if Alan was doing SV training as well. I think he was just doing CD. He was just CD training. Yeah. So in the future, there could be a potential mm. for more. Yeah, right. seems, I mean, they're taking on a lot of that role now. Yeah. There's, there's, there's obviously opportunities to do training at Waxstock. Yeah. Um, we have, we have obviously some interesting people on yep. the on the stage. Well, we try to have interesting people on the stage. Yeah. And we now find that we have quite a few people around that stage during the day. Yeah, that was that was good to have. Um, so maybe some more. Educational more people, stuff. more people, yeah, some more people. We, we're, we're finding every year we're we're getting more people from around the world coming. It's not just yeah. the UK. You know, we we have people, we've had people in the past come in as far away from as, as Australia. Yeah, wow. we had there was a guy from Bulgaria there yeah. this year. Yeah, um, guys from Poland, from Norway. Well, it's becoming a destination um, for people who exactly. want to find a detailing show because, frankly, apart from show and shines at like a car show, car show, there isn't anything that's detailing first that's right with a car show mixed in because the cars generally that show up to car shows are not in anywhere near yeah. the state of finish that the ones we saw at wax stock yeah i mean we've we've been 
We've been very careful in the way that we the way that we have uh, companies that come and exhibit at the show as well. We we you know we'll make a choice about whether they're actually a detailing related company or not. If they're not a detailing related company, they don't come because it's a detailing show. Yeah, and we we get approached by a lot of companies as the, as the years have gone on to come. LED light bars. Yeah, or absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suspension, you <clears throat> yeah. know, exhausts, all that sort of thing. Um, but no, we've we've kept it very specific mm. uh, to just detailing, and it and it it works. Well, but I think that's what everybody likes. Is I yeah. like seeing everybody that goes around and it's and, and they sell at this show, so you can mm-hmm. purchase items, um, which is <laughs> that was something I wasn't used to because the shows we generally go to, there's no selling or anything, so. Yeah. When those people come in, they're looking for the deals. They're looking to buy stuff. It, it, it's just a different experience all the way around. Yeah. I, I like that because it, it kind of wakes you up and you're like, oh, yeah, I've got to be on the, the A game to move stuff if i got to restock or you know, any of that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you guys' booth was packed <laughs> yeah. all day. Yeah, we made some good choices. That was good. <laughs> yeah, we made some good choices. Yeah. Um, we had, obviously, the rag company, Labo Cosmetica. Um, Detail Factory. Detail Factory. Uh, Carbon Collective, so we had some good we had some good brands. We try to we try to keep the brands to maybe five. Yeah. Rather than taking, we got forty six brands I think it is here. So yeah. Rather than taking that's all a of lot them. if you guys yeah. are thinking about it to carry yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> Even with five back five five brands, we filled the whole van. There was about an inch at the end of the van. Yeah. As we were leaving, <laughs> spare. Well, but sounds. but if you think about it, like some of those brands that you carry now, we're already there with their own. With their actual company, mm-hmm. because a lot of those are UK and mm-hmm. and uh, brands that you carry. Um, I guess but, I guess one question would be: so you know, with the brands that you had there at the booth, right? That is still a fraction of what you still carry here yeah. the, in the store. And so, um, kind of jumping into that, you know, going through, you know, we know that you know um, you carry us, and that's awesome, and we appreciate that. We know that you kind of go through your own vetting process and all the products that you carry, right? Mm-hmm. And you want to make sure that you're aligning with brands and things yeah. like that that you want to sell and uh, and you like. So give us a little look at uh, kind of how that process goes when choosing who you sell through Clean and Shiny. Okay. Well, obviously we look at we look at who else is selling the brand. Yeah. We try to we try to we try to add value where we can. So to give you an example is we t- we took Poker Premium on recently. Mm-hmm. Poker premium manufacturer carts, wheel wheel stands so that you can coat wheels, uh, and stuff to put in your garage uh, on the wall, put bottles in it, brushes in it, that sort of thing. What I don't want to do is just fill fill clean and shiny with um, with products that that we've already got maybe two or three, four, five of those within a brand. We we try to add value with each one that we do. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. So we 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 obviously get people coming to us every week asking us to sell their products but if it's already like a range that we've already got we don't tend to we tend to we tend to say no yeah. you know we we try to we try to I want to be able to support the brands that we've got and having having even 46 brands is is difficult sometimes to be able to give every single one of those brands the focus that you want to give it so uh, it's not all about maybe having 70 80 90 brands it's being able to focus on some of the brands that you you, you do have. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a loose, lot of use to be found in cannibalizing yourself at every mm-hmm. turn. It just becomes redundancies that you don't need. Well, the, then the, question, the questions that come from consumers are, you know, uh, I want a wheel cleaner. Which one's the best? Mm. And we want to be telling them which one's the best, not not which one is the best margin. You know, we want to actually be, we're, we're honest when we... Whenever we talk to talk to customers, it's like, yeah, this one's the best. This is this is what we use personally. You know, it's what we feel is the best. But do your research. Get online. Have a look and see what the, what people on detailing world are saying. Look on look on social media and see what people on there are saying. If you, you know. have a forum, it helps. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> and I feel like very similar to us. You know, um, your employees here are also car enthusiasts. Absolutely. Love cars. You're a car enthusiast, and so that goes a lot further than a lot of people realize when it comes to actually retailing detail products because um, you know it's easy to be a retailer in, in a lot of different industries but being passionate about what you're actually retailing um, you know says something completely different and having that hands-on product experience is also different and so um, you use a lot of this stuff mm-hmm. daily right you know yeah. throughout the week on different things and you have a, a, a little detail studio inside here that you'll do details on uh, but then off, you know, off the clock, you guys are at home using these products, vetting these products and testing them out. 
and it's really cool being able to talk to your um, your other coworkers and employees here and say, you know, hey, what's your what's your favorite smelling product or what's your favorite leather clean or what's this? And then um, they don't skip a beat. Like mm-hmm. they, they jump straight to it and they say, well, this is mine. You know, you know, he has something different mm-hmm. or, you know, she may not like this one, but I, I really like this one. I think it's really cool how people have developed opinions. I think that goes a lot further in customer service than um, always just saying, well, this is just the hot product right now too, right? So yep. they, you can point them in the direction of what's the best maybe for their application, but also you have some really um, cool personal preference behind the yeah. scenes there. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. exactly it. Yeah. And so what? Um, so car-wise and stuff like that, What when you started getting into detailing, you know what, what? What were things that you most enjoyed when detailing your own vehicle? You know, was it exterior, interior, polishing, waxing? I enjoyed the I enjoyed the waxing. I enjoyed the waxing. I enjoyed the polishing. Yeah. Polishing and waxing. As time's gone on, you know, I started out with a with a Porter cable, progressed on to a Makita. I used a Makita for years. Twenty twenty twelve ish, Rupes came along with a Bigfoot. Yeah. And we got the first Bigfoot, the second Bigfoot, the third Bigfoot. Yeah. Um. You know and. Yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy polishing polishing side. I'm not too keen on interiors. I'm not too keen on metal work. <laughs> but uh, I, I've I've got a I've got a small employee for for interiors. Oh yeah, she's great. Yeah. She loves yeah. interiors. Well, I don't. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. No, that's that's awesome. So, um, and then for people you know wondering, so you have your you have your website, right? You guys have your yeah. Instagram. You have all, you have all of that. Um, and then as far as you know other social media stuff are you guys planning anything are you guys doing anything on the social media side that's kind of fun or interesting um anything yeah i mean we do we do our we do our regular monday monday uh what you detail at the weekend yeah uh, and what we do some we don't do it every week but some weeks we're you know coming up to wax stop we gave tickets away to wax stop well yeah, most weeks know. a couple of pair, a pair of tickets nice um, for people that you know might have wanted to go what they needed to do was clean the car at the weekend and they could have been in chance with in with a mm-hmm. chance to win uh, you know, we post to Instagram, Facebook, do all that sort of thing. We have, we have. Uh, if we're going to post up offers and that sort of thing, that's where they go. But we, yeah. in terms of, in terms of, sort of competitions and uh, giveaways, they're 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 kind of here and there. We yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we do them yeah, as and when. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that and that's good. I don't think they should be too often because then people get used to them, and then it just also makes them look a little less special. Mm-hmm. So being able to host that and be, like the tickets for Wax Talk, that'd be huge, right? If mm. somebody you know got some tickets today, I said, oh cool, free tickets. You know, yeah. I'm already you know maybe nearby or an hour away. Makes it totally worth it to make that mm-hmm. drive and and come out to check it out. Um, so I guess moving on from there, then I guess the next question is, other than the Rag Company products, whatever your top, let's just say three favorite products in the last six months, year that you've brought on that you really like. Okay, well I can tell you quite easily two of them. Two of them are made by Lava Cosmetica. That's okay. an Italian brand um, that's, uh, that we've recently taken on. We took it on in uh, 1st of March. Yeah. Uh, their two products are uh, Enigo, which is a water spot remover. Oh, yeah. uh, and it's I've used a lot of water spot removers so over the last, we, last we've 12 been let to 18 down months. By a lot of them. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I have found the same. Uh, this, one, this one met the mark. It, it's oh. a phenomenal product, and uh, it's the one I reach for every time we've got an issue with water spotting on any car now. Second product is, uh, is again, a lab of Cosmetica, a product called Kronos, which is a carbon deposit remover. So oh, the time you spend really with, uh, with steel wool yeah, and yeah. Uh, steel wool and metal polish on the yeah. exhausts, on the tips, you put, you put Kronos on it. You use a little toothbrush or a stiff brush, mm. leave it, come back a few minutes later and rinse it and wipe it and it comes up perfect. Wow, that's mm. crazy. Really good product. Yeah. And then the third third thing would probably be a physical physical product physical product uh, yeah uh, the uh, poker premium detailing trolley ah, oh yeah so yeah. that that's my yeah. new favorite thing in the world because you were that checking thing, that out and that was awesome yeah, that thing that thing holds my polisher I can put the leads on there um, it's got it's got areas in it to put coating bottles because if you ever drop a coating bottle that's, a, that's yeah that's that's an expensive cool. mistake it's an expensive yeah. mistake to happen. Um, it's got, it's got a, it's got even, you know, right, quite clever things insofar as it's got number one and number two. So if you've got two of the same color towel and you've, you're using the same color towel for a, a similar job, you know, which side you're taking your towel from, whether you're taking yeah. it from number one or number two. No. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my, it's got bottle holders. It's all built in. This whole trolley is, uh, is probably my favorite, my, my favorite thing right yeah. now. Yeah. Cool. Oh, well, you have, nice. you have a lot of exposure to different brands and companies and products. 
and you have been exposed to that for many years. Mm -hmm. And every year at Waxstock, there is more of that because not every brand at Waxstock are brands that you sell, right? Because it's right. open to the detailing right. industry in well, general. And, and the brands there this year were different than the brands there last year. That's right. There was yeah. some crossover, yeah, was some... but but it was still amazing to see like mm -hmm. all the different changes this year. It's yeah. a great variety. So always, yeah. yeah. No. Awesome variety, always evolving. No, and so I think it's just I think it's just cool that you've been you've seen so much change throughout the years, and especially within the last five years, there has been so much change in the detailing industry mm. with different uh, trends, right? Different trends yeah. in products, yeah. different different names, words, things like that used in bottles, <coughs> and and so it's um it, it is pretty cool to be able to you know walk through your inventory, talk to you, and ask about hey, have you ever heard of this brand? You know, it may not be as popular, and you could say, yeah, I actually have heard of that brand. And um, what you were, the, the, the brand you were just talking about previously, I honestly could say I'd never, I yeah. never used their product Labo before. Labo Cosmetica. Yeah. Yeah. So that's no, I was really... noticing the branding. I liked the way it looked. It was kind of a cool... I, Italian definitely makes sense. Yeah. When you look at it, you, you could tell. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, this has been pretty awesome. you have any other questions for our friend John here? Uh, what time's dinner? <laughs> <laughs> It's eleven fifth. It's eleven twelve in Boise. It is eleven twelve in Boise. I can see it right <laughs> yeah. there. And yeah. uh, you know, number one supplier and all this. You're That's on my, right. You're on yeah. my watch. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's quarter past six here. here. So yeah, around an hour. Yeah. So we're uh, so we've been hanging out here. Uh, it's been awesome. We got to have a lot of fun. This uh, you guys took us out. That was amazing. We got to do the London Eye. So thank you to London you and Mandy, yeah. 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 lovely yeah. wife, for taking us. Uh, it was a real, it was a real London experience. I mean, there was the double decker buses. Um, I saw a couple of jumbo jets. Um, it didn't really feel like Austin Powers by any means, but it was definitely a London experience. <laughs> Wimble Wimbledon. I saw oh, Wimbledon. Uh, Wimbledon. <laughs> Wim I saw Wimbledon. 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 Wimbledon Stadium. Wimbledon Stadium. Wimbledon. 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 confused by saying Wimbledon, which yeah, it's fine. It's, a, it's pretty much the same thing. I There's mean, a lot of people cringing <laughs> on the other side of that right now. It's it's it's, it's, it's pretty close, but no, <laughs> it, it, in all in all seriousness, <laughs> close. We, it's we, not we, even uh, there's, there's two different sports there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Golf is crazy. Yeah. Uh, no, on, okay, so on a real note then, uh, so where can everybody check you out on, say, Clean and Shiny on Instagram, Clean and Shiny yeah, on Facebook? Yeah, exactly, Clean and Shiny UK on Instagram and okay. Facebook. Okay, and then, uh, and you have your website, of course, Clean, clean and Shiny. Yep. And the forum? And the forum is detailingworld.co.uk. All right. There we go, we've done all that. Yeah, well, and you can get on, it's actually a lot of fun. I yeah. like, really like going on to Detailing World. Yeah, and just yeah. rooting around. That's one of my tons of info packed in there. Yeah. Just because yeah. of the virtue of it being there so long. It for for the newbies to the back. game that are only used to Facebook forum, Facebook groups. groups yeah. There was a time before Facebook groups that was so much better. <laughs> Message boards that you were where it was yeah, at, and it yeah. still is for people oh, yeah, who yeah. want to find solid resources you don't have to go hunting through facebook that, that's a pain yeah right? a pain. message yeah. boards make a lot of sense yeah. it was it's like its own it website. was exactly. it used to be a, a, you know, a time where if you didn't use the search button or if you didn't care to even look you know uh that post wouldn't last for very long whereas nowadays somebody can jump into a facebook group and say hi what's w-u-t-s the best wax w-a-x-e <laughs> and you're like oh my and you're like you're like oh no and so <laughs> we're off to know, we're, we'll help them right but we're like we're like you know they ask questions like that we're back on you know, on the forums it's a it's 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 a it's literally a library of information yep. to be able to yep. jump on and help and and uh and learn a lot well and i like because you can like it's not only Brands that maybe we in the states haven't heard of, but it helps when, um, just when you're doing a search for a product, and you're looking for some form of real world testing. Ninety percent of the time, it takes you. If you're just looking for a product, it will take you to detailing world. Mm -hmm. That's out of the all number the forms, one thing. There, it almost forums, always seems to go back yeah, to detailing yeah. world. Yeah. So it is a valuable piece of uh, uh, information to utilize. Um, so all you up and coming detailers, listen to this. Uh, do it's yeah. it's smart so yeah. cool all right all right guys anyway, Dane. well thank you so much for listening thank you so much for watching I got the camera running again for the last Hooray! episode there was just a little two minute block there back there you'll, you'll you won't even notice uh, at any rate guys thank you so much thank you John for inviting us into your wonderful air conditioned office yeah. it's been a little hot out there 
but uh, it's been enjoyable sitting three Dane's, across in the back Dane's of Dane's not leaving. Three series <laughs> of state. I, I'm enjoying it. I'm not leaving this room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> any rate, guys. Thank you for you guys coming to the UK. I, mean, yeah. I, pre- I really appreciate you all coming yeah, over. It's, it's been blast. amazing to yeah. see you for the last few days. So fun. And uh, I'm looking forward to SEMA. Good times. Yeah, well, I'm excited yeah, to have SEMA. you SEMA. That's next. Yep. Any rate, guys. Catch you next time. Adios. See ya. See ya.